Map versus Ohio involved a key question in American jurisprudence. The question is, what should we do when police officers commit an unconstitutional search? Should we allow them to use the evidence that they found? Or should we exclude the evidence as a way of deterring police officers from committing unconstitutional searches? Mapp versus Ohio involved a police search where police entered the home of Dalry Mapp. Whether they had a warrant to do so or not is disputed, and the Supreme Court ultimately assumed that they did not have a warrant. When the police were in the home, however, what is undisputed is that they found some incriminating evidence. For example, they found betting slips showing that Ms. Mapp was involved in illegal gambling uh, operations. They also found obscene materials, which means that Ms. Mapp had violated Ohio's laws against possessing obscene materials. And the issue then that the Supreme Court had to decide was whether that evidence could be used by the state of Ohio in criminal prosecutions against Ms. Mapp. Mapp versus Ohio is decided by a roughly six to three margin. The majority said that the exclusionary rule is part and parcel of our constitutional right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. The basic idea behind the exclusionary rule is that police officers should be given an incentive to comply with the Fourth Amendment. For example, if police officers are trying to decide whether to break into someone's home or to get a search warrant, if the exclusionary rule says the evidence will be excluded if they don't get a warrant, then maybe the police officers will have the incentive to go get a search warrant and comply with the Fourth Amendment. If you don't have an exclusionary rule, the majority justices said, then the police will be free to violate the rights of citizens because they'll know that there's no consequence to their illegal behavior. The dissenters agreed that the Fourth Amendment is a fundamental part of our liberties in this country, but took the position that each state should be free to craft their own remedies for enforcing those rights. So the dissenters would have allowed Ohio to decide to admit illegally seized evidence or exclude illegally seized evidence as it saw fit. The dissenters would not have imposed an exclusionary rule as some kind of constitutional requirement on Ohio and the other states. Mapp versus Ohio was a controversial decision when it was handed down in 1961 the common criticism is that it lets the criminal go free because the constable blundered. Why, critics of the exclusionary rule ask, should we let someone who's got a pile of drugs or a murder weapon in their home get off simply because the police made some kind of a mistake in collecting that evidence? And the exclusionary rule remains controversial even today. For example, in 2018, Justice Thomas, in a dissenting opinion, called on the Supreme Court to re-examine the basic constitutional underpinnings of the exclusionary rule, Justice Thomas suggested that the underpinnings weren't there and it was time for the Supreme Court to simply abolish the exclusionary rule. The way the Supreme Court has put it is that the exclusionary rule was part and parcel of our constitutional rights and that without an exclusionary rule, the police would essentially have a license to break into people's homes and illegally seize evidence. The exclusionary rule is a judicially created remedy designed to deter illegal police behavior by taking away any incentive for police officers to illegally search and discover evidence that they might want to use at trial.